Before getting into the main content of this video, I've created a Discord server for everyone to hang out, learn, and discuss anything related to embedded systems. I'll leave the invite link in the comments below, feel free to join and chat. Hey guys, in today's video I'll walk you through the basics of sending and receiving data using ESPNOW combined with LVGL. As you can see, for the hardware I'm using a custom CYD board that already has a built-in LVGL switch widget for turning LED on and off. I've also got a second ESP32 room board connected to an LED. This LED will be controlled by the switch on the CYD board through the ESPNOW protocol. I actually made a video on this topic before, but it was kind of a full package, pretty complex. That's why in this video, I'll show you a much simpler example, just turning an LED on and off so it's easier for you to understand and build upon for your own projects. All right, let's jump into the ESPNOW communication block diagram next. Here's the block diagram for how ESPNOW communication works. First, we need two ESP boards. In this case, I'm using two ESP32 room modules. To let them communicate with each other, we need to know the MAC addresses of both boards. In the video, you'll see the MAC addresses for both ESP32. Next, let's talk about the data package. We need to wrap the data we want to send inside a struct. In this example, I'll pack the switch state into a struct and send it over. Important note. The struct on both the sender and receiver must be exactly the same. If they don't match, the data won't be interpreted correctly. In this setup, when the data packet containing the switch state is sent to the receiver, if the value is 1, it will turn the LED on. If the value is 0, it will turn the LED off. Also, you can totally modify both the sender and receiver sides to make them send and receive data simultaneously in two-way communication if you want. All right, back to the coding part. On the master board, I created a simple switch using LVGL. This UI is just based on one of the LVGL examples. I also added a scrolling label just to make it look a bit more lively. As for the ESP Now code, I took inspiration from the tutorial on Random Nerd Tutorials. Their article explains ESP Now and all the functions pretty clearly. To let two boards communicate, first, you need to get the MAC address of the devices. Just copy their sample code. Flash it to your ESP32, open the serial monitor, and you'll get the MAC address displayed there. Now, let's get started with the sender board setup. First, you need to create a struct to store the data you want to send. In this case, it's the switch state. Next, declare the MAC address of the receiving board, the one that controls the LED. You also need to set up a peer for the receiver. I named it slave. Then, you have to create a callback function for when data is sent. I use the onDataSent function from Random Nerd Tutorials directly. After that, create an ESPNOW initialization function. I named mine ESPNOW in it. Make sure you replace the peer name and the MAC address array according to your own setup. I used slave and my MAC array. Don't forget to call ESPNOW init inside setup to initialize ESPNOW when your board boots up. Finally, create a function to send data. I called mine send data. Inside this function, you need to replace the MAC address array. The struct name you created earlier, I used state as the struct. Also, call the senddata function inside your LVGL switch event handler so it sends the updated state whenever the switch is toggled. Super important part here. You need to get the current switch state from the LVGL widget and assign it to the struct before sending. First, create a variable for the switch state. I named it UI switch state. Then, assign the value from the LVGL switch to this variable. 
Finally, assign that variable to your state struct field. Also, one critical thing. Both boards, sender and receiver, must be set to the same Wi-Fi channel for ESP now to work properly. All right, next I'm going to build and upload the firmware to the master board. After uploading successfully, I opened the serial monitor to check whether the device is actually sending the data. As you can see, when I toggle the switch, it shows delivery failed. That's because I haven't plugged in the receiver board yet. Now I'll go ahead and connect the receiver board and test again. And as you can see, once the receiver is powered and connected, every time I toggle the switch, the serial monitor shows delivery success, which means the data is being transmitted correctly. Next, let's take care of the receiver board's code. First, I need to define a GPIO pin to control the LED. In this example, I'm using GPIO4. Then, I create a struct exactly the same as the one on the sender side. Of course, we also need to declare the MAC address of the sender device. Inside the onDataRef callback function, make sure to assign the correct variables from the received struct. This part is super important. The rest of the functions are similar to what we did on the sender side. Again, you can check out the full code and detailed explanation from Random Nerd Tutorials. I've dropped the link in the description below. All right, final step, I'll build and upload the firmware to the receiver board. Once uploaded, I open the serial monitor to check if it's receiving data properly. And as you can see, whenever I toggle the switch from the sender board, the receiver board gets the on-off state instantly with super fast response. So in this video, I've shown you how to combine LVGL with the ESP Now protocol to wirelessly control an LED using a switch widget, simple, fast, and reliable. If this video helped you, hit that like, subscribe, and share to support the channel. Got questions? Drop a comment, I'm here to help. See you in the next project.